G'day Internet, welcome back to another video and to the Amiga 1000. Uh, a computer that really doesn't need that much of an introduction at this point. Uh, certainly a iconic machine in vintage computer circles uh, and probably fairly close to the top of many a collector's holy grail list. This one is mine. Uh, the only thing to really note in, on this machine is that it works. There isn't really anything that needs fixing. Um, I won't say how much I paid for it. These things are expensive these days. Um, but I was able to pick one up a few months ago at a reasonably decent price. Uh, and here it is. The only thing I had to do was um, swap out the floppy drive. If you remember back to my uh, last Amiga 2000 video where I mentioned that I'd played musical floppy drives again, this is where it ended up in this machine. So in this video, there's only a few things I want to do. It needs a good clean. Um, there's parts of it that need a retro bite, uh, retro bright. Um, the keyboard especially, it's done that Apple thing where the keys haven't discolored, they're filthy, um, but the space bar has, uh, and so does the outer case. So that'll all go into my vapor brighting oven, which is like just down there. Um, and the rest of it will get a good clean. Uh, and at the end of the video, there is just one small modification uh, I want to make for a bit of, uh, let's just think to say to make life a little easier. Anyway, let's get into it. Here is our uh, Amiga 1000. Now, full disclosure, uh, I've actually got most of the screws currently out of this at the moment, um, mainly because, and this is gonna be an unpopular opinion, the Amiga 1000 is possibly one of the most unpleasant machines to uh, disassemble. That's just my opinion, but yeah, I'm not, it's not something I like to do on a regular basis. All right, memory expansion out. Uh, how did I? This is, these are all clipped down the side uh, and partially into the front. Uh, the screws are already out of this. This comes off. There's normally two screws underneath. But you've got to be careful with the LED wires. Uh, the plug for the power LED is actually tucked in under here. So I've been very carefully removing the LED. This one does have a plug, which is nice. Assume it wants to, come on. Right, uh, the most painful bit, which is the RF shield, because there's screws here, screws all the way down the back and some twisty bits. That should come out. Uh, next, if I remember correctly from last time I had this apart, is the disk drive, which again has got many, many screws. Oh, one little thing about the uh, expansion, memory expansion, it's a great place to keep your screws. And the floppy drive, not only is it held in by the four normal screws, it's also held in by the standoffs, which are kind of behind these uh, joystick connectors. So I need a flathead screwdriver. And that should be enough once I actually unplug and the power. This should, yes, lift out. Good. Um, what's next? Power supply, if I remember correctly. Uh, and this has got two screws which double as motherboard screws. Unplug this, give a bit of a helping hand. Uh, I think that's it. No, it's still being held in by the motherboard. Uh, 
Uh, I think I'm going to have to, let's pop the back out. Come on. Uh, and now I think it, does it lift up from here? And you got to pop these out. Is there something still holding it in? Right. One main board extracted. And now, what is holding the power supply in? Ah, it has two hooks which go down in there. Okay. This, uh, the front cover and the top cover are now going to go get a serious scrub. Um, and while I'm doing that, I'll also tear down the keyboard. You probably don't really need to see that uh, and it'll get a scrub too. And we shall return when everything is ready for retro writing. So one thing I did just discover is that this is actually big enough to fit uh, the main case pieces in. I thought I was actually going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. So, that's in there. Carefully place this on top. And we should be right to go. Let me switch it all on. Righto. I'll give that um, probably a couple of hours and I'll come back and check on it. Right, so it's been a bit over an hour and I'm gonna check on it a bit early. Um, primarily because, well, I'm still getting used to this whole thing. Uh, and also, um, they're not actually all that yellow, the parts I'm doing now. It's the keyboard that's the most yellow. So, um, I'm about to put my mask on because I discovered last time, it's not necessarily when I'm filling this thing up that there's heaps of fumes and it gives me a ripping headache. It's actually when I open this thing up. So if I suddenly sound like I'm underwater, you'll know why. So turn it off. Put the mask on. Right. Here we go. That looks really good. Okay, so I'm gonna go give this a rinse and then I think I'll just put the other part straight in. So I'll let that go for about another hour and a bit um, and then I'll start on the other pieces uh, and I'll probably see you uh, when they're all done. So you may remember uh, a small modification that I alluded to at the beginning of this video, and it is this. This is a simple manual DF0, DF1 switcher. Uh, and if you're wondering why I'm using this and not the auto switcher that I did in the 2000, uh, it doesn't fit in a 1000 uh, that has a daughter board. Ask me how I know. Anyway, so this is a simple one, uh, just made it from some sockets uh, and some wire and a switch. I'll put a how-to down in the description. 
Um, but the tricky bit of it isn't actually this. This bit's reasonably easy. The tricky bit is actually the switch. This is a heavily modified switch from Jaker. Um, I'll put a picture up here somewhere um, of what it originally looked like, but I had to trim a whole bunch of it uh, and also thin out the knob. It's nothing quite like thinning a knob. Um, and because it has to fit through the vent on uh, the fan vent on the back of the Amiga. And the reason for that is, is that there is really no way on uh, a 1000 to feed a switch out or do anything like that without cutting a hole. And I really didn't want to cut a hole in my 1000. So I'll show you where this switch mounts. Right, fan shroud, fan. There's actually a bit of a gap between the edge of the case and where the fan starts. The fan starts about here. Uh, and you've got these cross braces in behind. So, my little switch, it goes, uh, so the switch holes go above and below the cross bits and the switch pops out in between. And it is quite a tight fit and can be fiddly, but you think, there we go, right. So that goes in there. Um, I made a little rear uh, bit that kind of acts as a bit of a washer, I guess. Um, and then two tiny M2 screws. And there's our switch. Now you need a bit of a fingernail to get uh, onto it or a small screwdriver, uh, but certainly not something I'm gonna be using every day anyway. With that done, I will now go and finish putting it all back together. And there we go, one very shiny and clean uh, Amiga 1000. Uh, and with that DF01 boot switcher added, uh, that means I can now boot up off the GoTech, which is how it is at the moment, uh, and teamed up with uh, a one megabyte uh, Microbotics uh, RAM expansion, which has got to be the worst sidecar fitting upgrade whatever I've ever dealt with, but it's, don't breathe near it, it's working. Um, actually quite a capable little machine now. Um, and look, the reason for the GoTech isn't not isn't just for convenience, because obviously that helps. Let's be honest, these Amiga drives, especially lately, seem to be dropping like flies. So I'll keep the disk drive for when I need to use it. That's kind of my thinking behind it anyway. But a couple of nice little upgrades for this 1000. But when it comes to upgrades, I think we can do better. But you're gonna have to wait for the next video to find out what that is, ha <laughs> ha. Uh, if you like this one though, click like, subscribe, all the usual youtube -y stuff. As always, a massive shout out to my Patreons who are scrolling up the screen as I speak. And if you'd like to help support the channel, there is a link in the description. But until then, I'll see you in the next one. Shiny and clean uh, Amiga 1000. Uh, and with that quick, fuck off. It was unnecessary.